person that gets a concealed handgun license, they're just not going to go crazy when they cross the threshold of a college campus. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and the most people here are going to be 18 to 20 years old. So you're not going to have a lot of people anyways. you got to be 21 to have a CHL. So everyone thinks everyone's going to be running and gunning and it's just going to be this huge, like, OK, corral fight or something. Right. And I like how they close their, their little ceremony here by saying that, you know, we had an awesome gun free event. Well, that's not true at all because I'm carrying two guns on me right now. So and I'm standing on the street sidewalk, walkway parking lot or garage of this campus it is totally legal with a concealed handgun license to carry a gun. Now, did you try to open any uh, dialogue, debate with any of these uh, anti-gun UT people? Uh, I didn't personally, although I hear that they did try and shut down individuals that did. Yeah. What about you? I'm just here. I was studying out in the FAC, and I just decided to come over and support them because it's something that I really believe in, and I've actually been a victim of a lot of crimes, and having a gun in that position is really useful and effective. Yes, uh, so I was actually watching this back at the studio. You know, guys know I'm doing the nightly news tonight, so I had a lot of work to do back there. But I saw AJ and some of the other guys get arrested for holding the sign. It wasn't even a, a firearm issue. It wasn't, you know, open carry or anything like that, which has a lot of controversy in these parts. But it was just somebody holding a sign in the United States of America without a permit, which just goes to show, which should alarm anybody who's watching this, that if you may go to an event on your college campus, it may not have anything to do with gun rights. But if you just show up in the wrong place with the right sign and then they say, oh, no, you can't be here. You're going to get arrested for holding this. That is exceptionally troubling and downright frightening that that would happen in the United States of America. So that's really what brought me out here more than anything else, just to see not just how the Second Amendment, but also the First Amendment is under attack as well. And people are so glad to uh, have you arrested, have you carted off. I saw, you know, ladies, you know, clapping as these guys were shoved into the back of these police cruisers. And understand, ladies, that they weren't arrested for their gun rights. They were arrested for their free speech. So when you clap these guys getting arrested for their free speech, it's just a matter of time before it gets around to you. You've seen that the anti-gun protesters want nothing to do with having a conversation, not even willing to open a dialogue, just push their rhetoric down your throat and make you listen. But the gun, the pro-gun people were willing to have a dialogue because they had facts, and that's what's going on here at UT. I might as well just... approval for Hillary Clinton. Get your Hillary for Prison 2016 t-shirt today at the InfoWars store. Hurry up because these things are selling out faster than Hillary Clinton. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life vitamin B12 formulation. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives 
gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Tim Donnelly is a politician. He is a Republican member of the California State Assembly in 2010. He was reelected in 2012. Uh, Donnelly was also a candidate for the California uh, for California governor in 2014. He placed third in that open primary. Um, he's also a radio talk show host on Radio Free California, and it's the TimDonnellyShow.com. So welcome, Mr. Donnelly, to the show. Now. What's going on with SB 277? I know that there was a massive push to get some signatures um, to oppose this bill. Yes, that, that is correct, and thank you for having me on. Uh, we, we've been working tirelessly, when I say we, myself, and uh, thousands of Californians who are concerned about this egregious assault on not just parents' rights, but natural rights, human rights, mm -hmm. the, the right to decide what you inject in your own body or your child's body. Uh, and in that time frame, we, we have educated an incredible number of people and created a grassroots movement that is hitting full stride now. The, the signature gathering is over. The signatures have been turned into the uh, registrar of voters in all, all of the 58 counties in California, and we are waiting for their final tally on them. Okay, so the final tally hasn't come in. I know that there was a little bit of discrepancy there. The L.A. Times was reporting that it's over, it's done, there weren't enough votes. Uh, some people are saying, you know, was there a little bit of sabotage involved? Thousands of signatures are missing. So there's a little bit of a discrepancy there with these votes. And as well, I know you uh, talked about facing some strong opposition from the pharmaceutical lobby as well. Well, we, we certainly have seen a tremendous amount of opposition, and we've even experienced it undermining within, within the movement itself individuals who purported to be in favor of our viewpoint uh, you know, wound up undermining much of what we were doing. And the, 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 I've, I've never really seen it this strong. And, and I think it has to do with the amount of money that's involved. You're, you're talking um, hundreds of billions of dollars when it comes to the pharmaceutical industry, uh, at least in the United States. Right. Yeah. And we have actually seen a lot of the pharmaceutical lobby there behind uh, some of the people responsible for getting SB 277 passed. So obviously a lot of money propping those sort of people up as well. Now, I know you're saying that your voices have been heard and you're not going anywhere. Um, so what, what can people do from here if, this is, if, if there aren't enough votes at this point? Well, if there's not enough signatures, then obviously it won't qualify for the ballot. And, mm -hmm. and that'll be a, a massive disappointment to all of those who were hopeful that that it would that it would ultimately qualify uh, but uh, look the, the, the fight doesn't end uh, the the next step would naturally be lawsuits because when you look at what sb 277 does it it dangles it, it 
actually holds your, your child's educational future hostage. It kicks your child out of every public setting for education, be it public school, private school, uh, charter schools, or even daycare. And, and, and in some homeschooling environment where the homeschoolers uh, association has a relationship with the public school to come in and, and – or I'm sorry, with a charter school – to come in and do some sort of a public activity that involves hanging around with other kids, your kid would be would be ostracized and and forbidden to attend that. And, and what's their crime? Maybe missing one single booster shot. That that's literally what we're doing here. And and the government is forcing, coercing, and intimidating parents into going against their own personal beliefs or religious beliefs or their conscience. And they're doing it in the name of a health crisis that doesn't exist. Right. Well, I mean, they're they're basically saying that their vaccinated children are getting sick by unvaccinated children, which then well, why are you even getting vaccines if they're clearly not working? Their whole argument doesn't even make sense. So what are well, pa- go ahead when you when you start to ask people questions like that, they get really mad. They do. Um, it, it's kind of funny. So so you, you take the CDC's own report on the so-called measles outbreak at Disneyland. The CDC claims that they wiped out measles back in 2000 or 2003. There hasn't been a death since 2003. And yet this little measles outbreak at Disneyland, which happened in 2014, was used as an excuse to target and scapegoat those who have chosen to either not vaccinate or selectively vaccinate their children. And they they represent a very, very small uh, part of the population. They tend to be much more knowledgeable about their health and and health care issues in general. And what's fascinating is when you read the CDC's website, they've identified the original patient as most likely being a foreign visitor to the U.S. So someone came here and reintroduced measles in the United States, and they've gone after a completely different group of people, even though when you look at the rest of the results and, and, and the information on their website, People who were vaccinated and people who were not vaccinated and people whose vaccination status were unknown contracted and spread the disease equally. Right. And something I did a, a, a report on this, I guess I forget the, the young guy's name that they were kind of parading around. And he was sort of the poster child uh, for this SB 277. He was getting uh, chemo treatments and basically saying, don't bring your unvaccinated kid to school and make someone like me that's, you know, has a a failing immune system susceptible to those viruses. When if you go to the John Hopkins site or or another one of these children's hospitals, it specifically used to say right before they were trying to pass SB 277 to avoid contact with the recently vaccinated, that it was those recently vaccinated children that were actually going to be the more dangerous ones that could possibly pass along a virus. And they changed that manual that they would give to people receiving cancer treatment to fit this ideology here with SB 277, which yeah, I... That, that uh, doesn't surprise me. I mean, that was fascinating. You know, they're, 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 when when the powers that be decide they want to push a narrative, when they have the media compliant, and they have terrified the media into not reporting on anything to do with vaccine side effects. Right. So the, the, the buzzword is safe and effective, even though the Supreme Court has said that they're, they're unavoidably unsafe. And the Vaccine uh, Injury Compensation Fund that is actually run by the government, funded by your tax dollars and my tax dollars, has paid out over $3 billion in injuries for a product that's supposed to be safe and effective. So obviously something's wrong. And, and, and when, you, when you start to ask questions, it, it, it's, it's funny. People who don't trust the government on anything else, all of a sudden, with the sacred cow of, of vaccinations, they become mind-numb zombies. And it's like, oh, the government knows all. The government is we, – we must trust the government. We must protect public health. Right. When, it, when, in fact, the government has been found recently – to have been burying and shredding and destroying evidence of 